You already know that your world has changed. You already know that the luxury marketplace is different. So instead of holding on to the past, you have to do the opposite and constantly challenge yourself to redefine yourself. The consumer has moved on a long time ago and you're either going to get catch up or you're going to be left behind. Listen to what people are telling you, not what you want to hear. The companies of the future that will succeed, that will enjoy even greater profit than you've enjoyed in the last two years despite the recession, are those with the best quality of listening. What business are you really in? Because it, it not only doesn't have to be, it probably can't be the same business as the past. Because you can look at something, Massimo was sitting next to me a little bit earlier on today and he, he leant across and he said, um, you know Simon, Gucci makes beautiful shoes. And I said, I know Massimo, they, they do. He said, they're very comfortable. Then he looked at my shoes and he said, the ones you're wearing, not so much. <laughs> but I want to reassure you, underneath all of this, I am wearing some Gucci vintage underwear. So all <laughs> vintage underwear, is that? No. But all is not lost. All is not lost. What's a vintage underwear? Recycled in the best sense. <laughs> no. Uh, Kept for a long time and I, yeah, full of memories full of memory. as I become vintage. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. In the 1980s and 1990s, women, I'll just use women as an example, used to walk down the street very fashionably dressed. And what would they be wearing? They'd be wearing, they'd be Gucci all over something, and Prada all over something, and Fendi all over something. They were like walking billboards of low goes. You know, they had signature. <laughs> they had signature logos, correct? And effectively, you're a walking billboard for those brands. That's who I am. I'm Gucci, I'm Prada, I'm this and that. I predict that within the next five to six years, someone will walk down the street with the same collection of brands on them but what they will be saying, this is a collection of the core values that mean something to me. I support breast cancer. I care about the environment, X, Y, Z. Same outfit, but the takeaway will be an aggregate of the values that are important to that person. Because you are taking the visceral, emotional power of somebody who has been through a crisis like cancer and slapping it on the tarmac right in the face of the sweat equity of all those cyclists who are riding up the you know, the Pyrenees and so on. Incredibly simple, incredibly powerful. And that's only possible because they actually care about something. They have a value proposition they want to support. If you suck in real life, you're really going to suck in social networking. Because it's not about you. I'm sorry, it is not about you. We all have to get over ourselves. And this is why it's so hard for institutions, whether they're an ad agency, whether they're a foundation, whether they're a government body. For years, we've operated on the conceit that we need to control people. We have a media monopoly. We tell people what to watch and when. We can what can you take with your designs, your patterns? What can you do that is unthinkable, that hasn't been seen before, that is sitting right in front of you, and you keep walking right past it? Making the most of your opportunities and minimizing the chances that bad things will happen requires a very simple strategy. You have to build up the positive and reduce the negative forces. If you're not taking a risk, you're not even relevant. If you're not failing, you're not even part of the conversation.